or I'm old. You've grunged it out to living in the 90s. You've sung along with your kids to Kids Bob. You turned it up to Freedom Rock. Now, get ready for the softer side of cybersecurity with Sunsets and Snowdrifts, including all your favorite hits, like Don't Go Breaking My Encryption. Don't go breaking my encryption. I can't fight this fishing anymore. And I can't fight this fishing anymore. We will pat you. We will, we will pat you. I want to know who logged this. Who could forget? How am I supposed to live without Vicenzo? How am I supposed to live without Vicenzo? And who came up with this amazing compilation of cybersecurity hits, you might ask? It's your podcast host, Senior Sunset and Mr. Snowdrift, Evan and Kennedy. Hey, hey, guys. How's hey, it going? Hello, Mr. Snowdrift. <laughs> i'm on fire man i feel like we need i feel like we need to refresh some of those songs <laughs> we need some more right we need the the version two although we yeah. haven't gotten through a full season you know we can get through a full season that's true and then patience uh, yeah i think gotta, i look gotta better be with this the gray. Thing or whatever I, got going I, I feel like you're in a in a don henley video evan i don't know if that reference goes over everybody's head but no, no, I, I like that. I think it um, Let's hope it hides, eagles. <laughs> it hides the cheeks, you know, and the high blood pressure thing. Yeah. So it looks like I'm healthy. -er. I don't know. I was, a, you know, as an 80s kid growing growing up on MTV, I don't know, seen like every video out there, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like. What was uh, the, what like was the one with um, the, they were writing words across the screen. It was, it was an NXS. Oh, oh yeah. The, I don't. Was it written across the screen, or were they holding up signs? There's, there's I maybe mean, they're holding up signs. Yeah, there's there's probably double fisting right now. Double fisting. Yeah, they blurted out. You know, we can't have any uh, any endorsements of. Uh... <laughs> let's get let's get sponsored by Monster. I know that would be nice. Well, so I funny story. Uh, my my um, wife's sister, so my brother in law is legal counsel for Monster. Hmm. So really, see? yeah. Um, yeah, so guys, great, uh, great to see you here. I, you know, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Um, for those that are on the podcast with us, you have some controls down at the bottom there. There's a, a Q and a section there for you. Uh, feel free to use that. If you have questions, we will be answering questions live, um, towards the end here as well. Um, so feel free to use that. If you can hear us and see us okay, and you see Evan in his Don Henley commercial or video, and you see Michael uh, in his wood, what do you got there? Uh, cabin. Pine, <laughs> Pine cabin. Pine uh, cabin. If you could hit that raise hand button just to let me know that uh, we're all working well. It looks like we've got some hands up there. So fantastic. Well, you know, it's been a pretty exciting, uh, I guess, month last month. Uh, when I say exciting, pretty crazy, right? Um, some, some of the stuff going on out there. Um, I know you guys obviously were very, very uh, vocal around the CrowdStrike stuff. Uh, what, what did that look like to you guys? <laughs> it's a can of worms, man. <laughs> I know, I know. It's one of those things, man, but... Uh, yeah, tough, a tough one because it falls on the vendor shoulders, right? I mean, it, this wasn't the normal stuff we talk about when we talk about news, which is typically like hacks and, you know, uh, breaches and all that kind of stuff. This was kind of a screw up on the, the company side. So that's a little different. I mean, I mean, I mean they all blamed each other. So it's yeah, CrowdStrike blamed Microsoft. Microsoft blamed the, the European Union, which I thought was fucking really impressive. That you could go with like a whole subset the of countries, <laughs> right? It's like, <laughs> hey, it's the world's fault. Right. Um, and then, and then, so I mean, I I have opinions, and Evan and I shared some t messages <laughs> that day as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was more really more interested in what was going to happen, what was happening afterwards. 
um, from my viewpoint, the, yeah. what I, I saw a lot of the community reaching out to each other, offering help. Um, I know, um, you know, some, uh, you know, some of our team reached out to some customers that had that in their environment and, you know, I, you know, just let them know and offered help. Uh, the other side of it too is where I, I want, I was very interested in what CEOs would st come out and start saying that it wouldn't happen in their environments, that they were special. And I was really disappointed at a couple of CEOs that did that. Um, especially knowing full well of their product and the history of their products and firsthand knowledge of similar failures in their products. I'm not global, you know, what did they, what did this crowd strike have? What a 15% or so 15 or 20% of the market, or there's a percentage of the market. So 8.5, 8.5 8 million windows machines. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, you know, you see, you see the impact. Um, maybe those other competitors don't have the, the breadth of deployments that, that CrowdStrike does, but, um, I was, I was pretty uh, pissed at that, to be honest. I thought that, you know, and, and we saw this with solar winds. We saw it with some of the other events in the past. It's like the, the finger pointing and they're like, oh, it never happened to us type stuff. So I was, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think one thing you pointed Everybody, out at them was the lack of empathy that was there. Yeah, right? the so lack of empathy. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's the, uh, this is what we get, you know, from running, you know, for running to the cloud, right? I mean, everybody mm -hmm. saw it as, most people ran to the cloud, not because of maybe the improved, not necessarily the improved functionality or anything, but just because it was more convenient, Yeah. right? So we could just, you know, it's not uncommon for people to move to the cloud and and just say, well, they'll take care of my stuff for me, you know, and it, you're right. It's a lack of accountability, you know, across the board, you know, obviously CrowdStrike should have known better, you know, releasing something like that, you know, prior to, you know, adequate testing, having those checks and balances in place. And you'd be surprised, you know, be surprised at the stuff that happens behind the scenes in organizations like that, you know, Microsoft or, and CrowdStrike, you know, they, they come off and they've got this reputation of being like the authority <laughs> on things. And you'd be surprised at how clustered things are behind the scenes. So it didn't, it didn't surprise me. I found out like Friday morning, I actually found out from my wife, I got up and looked at my phone and I saw a whole bunch of messages, but none of them were from you know, my team or anything. So I just figured, you know, whatever I'll, I, I have a routine in the morning where I take the dogs out and stuff. And my wife, like, did, did you hear what happened with CrowdStrike? And I'm like, no, I didn't, I didn't hear it. And she, and then she kind of said something as I was walking out the door and, uh, Hey, kind of put two and two together and then come back and you're like, damn, you know, that's, it's pretty bad. The, uh, but it shows how, I mean, it's going to happen again, not oh, yeah. maybe with CrowdStrike, uh, but it'll be something else. You know, when we put all our eggs in one basket, you know, the fact that initially George Kurtz, you know, said it's not a security incident. And I was, and that's where I got kind of vocal. I'm like, bullshit. It's not a security incident. It's absolutely a damn security incident. And then he later changed his, his remarks to say it wasn't a, a security attack. Okay, right. maybe, but you know, so it's frustrating how you know right out of the gate, you know, you try the PR thing, you know, uh, and I get it. I mean, you're in business to make money, but you know, the initial response was you know kind of shitty, and people are still you know still some parts that are still you know you know dealing with it. Delta, you know, the CEO I think yesterday announced that you know they're going to go after CrowdStrike for damages. I think there's a couple of class action lawsuits already out, yeah. you know, against yeah. CrowdStrike. Uh their product is, I mean the thing about CrowdStrike, it, their product is actually pretty legit, but mm -hmm. they've always been this marketing engine. You know, people don't buy it because their product actually works as much as like they've got cool, you know, cartoony robot looking things and they say that 
you know, they protect against everything and it's, it's bullshit, you know? So yeah. that part pisses me off. I'm hoping that something comes out at the end, but you know, George Kurtz has been in front of Senate hearings before and got away with, you know, I mean, him and Kevin Mandy, I got away with, you know, essential bullshit, which really pissed me off. But nobody was, I don't know if anybody was listening or what. I mean, we just kind of look at these icons, you know, in this industry that have been around for so long as like their shit doesn't stink, but all our shit stink. You know what I mean? I've been around for the same amount of time as those guys. So I've seen kind of the game. So it's frustrating. I think it's just at the end of the day, the, the world is, is confused by it all frustrated by it all. And I think, you know, they'll just, at the end of the day, we won't hold anybody accountable for it, which sucks because it costs a whole shitload of money. Yeah. And somebody needs right. to pay for it. Yeah. And it, right. it was it didn't just affect businesses, right? I mean, it affected people like every yeah. just about everyone. And I know I I was even I flew on Friday just this last Friday and they were still everything was still backed up and delayed. And you know, you didn't know if you were gonna get to where you were going. So I mean, it has a real true impact on, you know, the regular people out there. And I think that's that's the part I that I really um took from your post, Evan, was, you know, just that lack of empathy, lack of apology, lack of understanding that, you know, how this is impacting and affecting people. And we understand and we're here for you. None of that kind of talk from them, right? It was like more of very kind of scripted and, and um, yeah, just no feeling. Well, right? And it ticks me off hmm. that there's people in our industry who come to their defense. Yeah. It's like where I grew up and how I grew up, <clears throat> There is, there's clear right and wrong. There's clear, like, if you did something wrong, you did somebody wrong, whether it was intentional or not, you still did somebody wrong. Yeah. Have to make amends for that. And I'm not sure, you know, so regardless of what I think of CrowdStrike, you know, opinion wise, what they did was wrong. It caused a shitload of damages. It hurt a lot of people and inconvenienced a lot of people. I mean, there's probably thousands and thousands of stories of what it, how it affected people. And, you know, where again, where I come from, you have to you have to pay the price. I mean, it's sorry. Yeah, my dad used to say all the time. You know, shitty decisions have consequences, and so you have to mm -hmm. pay for. It. Yeah, and I think their attempt their attempt at that DoorDash, the ten dollar DoorDash, too. You know, there there was some intent there that was right on, but it's just the execution is horrible. And to your point, I mean maybe uh uh the empathy apology a little bit owning it you know well he did that later yeah. you know his initial yeah. ones were and it was crazy how many people came to the defense of that well i'm sure he was advised by legal counsel it's like no you, you don't right. know how breaches work your initial responses are always pr driven right You're not driven you don't have enough time to really fully account for the legal stuff sure legal legal is involved in those things but it wasn't legal that told him not to apologize because it was already obvious at that point where, you know, where the uh, least a you know, major part of the fault lied lies. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. I was pretty surprised at the, um, I don't know, reaction on social media of, of different people because, you know, I saw the, the joke memes and all that kind of good stuff. And I, I think, in a, in something this big, that's going to happen, and and it is right. Yeah. The late night talk show hosts and all those folks are going to get involved and say stuff. But I was surprised that another section of social media was like saying, "Oh, that's bad and that's wrong, and you shouldn't be making fun of this." That impacted real people. That's kind of our normal thing now, right? Is like, hey, we gotta we gotta shut down anybody who's kind of having fun with something, even though, you know, yeah, it was real. It impacted people, but I think there's a place for comedy in our, you know, and things like that in, in our, um, in our society. And I was really surprised at the amount of people I saw that were just kind of trying to shut all that down, which was weird. I thought, I don't know if you guys well, saw and what you, what you miss out. I mean, that's the way some people cope with shit. Yeah. Right. You know I mean? If you've ever been in, in high, you know, high, uh, high stress situations, high intensity situations, you notice some members of the team deal with it differently. You know, it's a mental health thing. Like some people have to yep. make light make of it. Light of something. Back right. down into, you know, so to tear somebody up for, you know, 
obviously there's tasteful jokes and distasteful right. Jokes, <laughs> yeah. but you know if yeah, some if people take it too far we know that yeah well it's some of that too is like you just talked about i mean it's perspective right yeah. how do you how do you uh let, let's put it in perspective yeah you know, everything came to a halt um everything impacted um, i haven't seen any stats on you know the impact of anybody's lives through that and you know i'm sure there's a loss of money a loss of time all of those things but you know i deal with i deal with that with you know microsoft goes there's 365 goes down every afternoon you know, Comcast Xfinity is going down, you mm -hmm. know, at, at, at three o'clock and, and blurbs blurts out. You know, what was um, it? What was it yesterday? Microsoft unusual uh spike in user activity. Yeah. It's like it's a DDoS attack. And what well, yeah. The fact that you have, I mean, I can't imagine the budget that you would have to mitigate DDoS attacks in Azure. And they said oh that they gosh. had the you know, they had mitigations, but the mitigations didn't work. It's like, man, it's crazy that you can provide. I mean, it, only in this world where we're at right now, you can provide a service that might work, might not work. And you've got, you know, some systems in those environments that are critical systems. I mean, like life systems. Yep. And it's like, man, yeah, well, whatever. I mean there's just no consequences for producing shitty software with terrible network architectures. The fact that you could even push, you know, on the crowd strike thing, the fact that you could even push an update like that without proper measures in place, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, it's well, like, gun safety. you know, one of the things of gun safety, right. They teach you. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, trigger. Yeah. Don't, yeah, trigger. Exactly. Yep. don't, you know, you don't run around with a gun with your damn finger on the trigger. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, how do you guys think as a whole, our industry kind of reacted to it? Do you think that more people did the right things or thought down the right lines? Or was there just too much finger pointing? And I mean, I imagine it impacted, you know, the anyone selling it, obviously, their customers are going to be the ones contacting them and wanting, you know, refunds or, or issues i don't know how that impacted either oster or fr even but um you know i imagine we didn't have a lot of information around what what had happened and why but um how do you think everyone kind of reacted to it and you know what were the overarching things is there something to learn from all this uh at least from not them but us you know uh, our industry well i mean 30 years in this industry, man, there's always something to learn in every one of these breaches. But over and over and over again, we don't we don't take advantage of that opportunity. I mean, SolarWinds was a great opportunity to do mm -hmm. egress filtering on your damn firewall. <laughs> you know, it's it's not like rocket science that it's you, not fucking it's hard. Not actually <laughs> configured correctly. It's not. It's not you hard. Know, here we are, and you know. So that's the frustrating part. I, I And I'm, you know, jaded for sure, you know, because we've just been down this path so many times and, yeah. mm -hmm. and sure not at this breadth, not this same particular detail, but yeah, bad things. And you could see this bad thing was coming down the road and you can see more bad things coming up down the road. So it's like either do something about it or don't, but I think people get in this kind of comfort, like, well, but that would be work. You know, I'd have to, configure stuff right it's like but you get paid for that shit you should configure stuff right yeah so until we I get did. serious about this and get like a real like mentality that i'm going to do my job correctly and be a professional that i am it's nothing's going to change i did see they didn't sign um ceases pledge secure by design too they're not on, they're not on the list when i looked but I saw a lot of um I thought it was pretty interesting because I, I was I was trolling for the the negative comments and I just kept seeing a lot of industry people talking to each other around, hey, if you're struggling here, here's what you do. Here's here's some actions. Here we have a a tool to solve for it. Here's where you go get the code. This is how you fix it. So I saw a lot of it felt like for me that first two days, it felt like there was a lot of community that was um 
you know, stepping up to kind of, to try to help in certain ways. Um, you know, I, you, you, so I guess I folk, I tried to pay attention to that piece throughout mm -hmm. it, so I, which I thought was pretty good. And, you know, I like to see us have more of a community and, and help each other versus trying to cut each other down and, and blame and if you would have had our product i did see some of that as well it's like oh it didn't happen to us because we have da 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 and this is why we're on right. this tool stack and it's like okay this, it could have happened wait anybody. fucking okay. six months and yeah. you're gonna implode well, yeah it. i mean there's the so. taking advantage of it for your own personal gain yeah, yeah that's 100 percent crap yeah. but you know there are times when it makes sense to beat somebody down <laughs> you know i mean when when you cause this much disruption, this much problem, this many problems for this many people, because the way it works every time, right? People think, mm -hmm. well, and I think one of the reasons why people don't get really bent out of shape about breaches is because they feel like, well, you know, it didn't really hurt, right? Because yeah. the way the way breaches work and the way this will work too is the costs are all distributed. So no one person is going to, you know, I'm not going to go bankrupt personally because of this but every business that gets affected by this is a business that's in business to make money right so they're not going to lose money they'll raise fees they'll recover the money some way and so it it comes like this whole community ends up you know you talk about community the whole community ends up paying for somebody else's negligence true yep and I don't want to pay for it anymore. You know, I'm tired of it because these things are basics. These are fundamentals. We're supposed to be professionals. And I understand we make mistakes. Mm. I get that. Right. But I mean, it, just because you get that I make mistakes doesn't mean that I don't need to pay for my mistakes. Yeah. You need to be held accountable to those. Right. I mean, I drive my truck and I cross over the center line. I didn't intend to cross over the center line and head, you know, I didn't intend to do that, but I need to pay for it. Yeah. That's the risk we take when we do what we do. So I do well, like they are offering $10 gift cards to fix things up after, you know, after it happens, but where's the community in demanding better from big tech? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, true. Yeah. So um, the, you mentioned cloud earlier and the kind of rush to cloud and that sort of thing. And I think that's, um, an interesting take on all of this. Um, do you think that more people will start looking back to prem then, or is that just we way past that at this point? You're talking to a tech guy, man. I I'm all about prem. I like seeing my stuff. I like seeing the yeah. boogie lights. I like to touch it. You know, it's uh, you like to push your own trust, updates, and I don't trust other people to configure my shit. Right. Right. Because I just who would I trust with it? You know. Uh, yeah, your data is, is where, right? I mean, you can say it's somewhere and you can. I mean, it doesn't mean yeah. I don't use the cloud. I do use the cloud, but sure. I, I use the cloud for things that I don't, that aren't really critical to me for the most part. You yeah, it'll be interesting to cloud, see if yeah. more people start, you know, kind of taking a look again at on-prem and, and if anybody starts going that direction, I, it's, I think, way too early to, to know. Um, yeah. I don't know, you know, that I I believe there was a rush to cloud per se. I feel like it's been a natural progression over time, but um, but maybe in in certain you know levels of business, maybe there's been a rush um, to to get there. But um, we also have a people problem there as well, right? Not having the people that can look at the blinky lights, configure it, touch it go into the data center, reboot it if needed, patch, mm -hmm. that type of, and, and then the reliance upon that third party to take care of all that for you. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's not just having it on-prem, but yeah, I, and I agree with you, Frank. I think it's too early to tell. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, you know, I'm the same thing. I don't, I don't like my stuff in the cloud. I don't like my stuff talking to the cloud. Yeah, you mean you can maintain a lot more control and security yeah. over something that you can see and touch and feel. Right. Yeah. Um, right. It's what is that the the, okay. the old line? It's cloud is just somebody else's computer, right? And so, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't take um, 
my financial data and walk it across to the neighbor and put it yeah. in on a USB stick and say, here you go. You can store this for me. Let me, I'll let you know when I need it. But it's funny. All those were, are essentially selling points to were selling right. points to the cloud, right? It's like, Oh, it's more secure. It's off prem. It's, you know, like all this stuff, which is more secure. Um, right. How is it more secure? Yeah. It was just, you know, things that were said. Um, oh, I know. I know. But, you know, and all of this brings us back to, you know, we talk a lot on this podcast about um, truth and security, you know, telling the truth and being transparent and all these. And, you know, here's another good example of where a company really could have stepped up and said, look, take, you know, this is what happened. This is what we're doing. We're really sorry. We see that it's impacting all these people and really, you know, been up front with that. And, um, you know, that kind of leads us into, as an industry whole, we're just not there, right? I mean, we need more companies like, you know, Security Studio, FR, and Austria who are like, we're going to tell the truth. We're This is part of our mission statement. Um, how do we get there? Like, what do we do to, to get other companies to truly believe that? How do, how do we do that, Michael? Hold them accountable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's going to hurt. Yeah, make it hurt hold them accountable people only do things i mean psychologically people only do things either they do them just without even thinking right yeah. that's the, kind of that sheep herd mentality they do it because they see an advantage for themselves in it right so what do i get for it everybody always asks you know, what's in it for me and mm -hmm. the third is it hurts too much mm -hmm. so, i don't know give them an advantage for doing things i don't i don't know because like you think crowd strike you can't tell me that this wasn't ever brought up internally. Like, you know, we should be really careful about pushing updates four times, five times a day that something bad could happen. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't, it wasn't like, oh shit, we never thought that was ever going to happen. I mean, and they, they somewhere somebody made a, cho a decision to not, you know, to not address that risk. I mean, it has to be, I mean, there's, I mean, as, as I'm doing work, I'm doing designing things, you know, it's like, what if, what if, what if, and then you test the shit out of it. And you know what I mean? And I don't have, I don't have billions of dollars to work through that shit. I mean, they're smart people. <laughs> no, they're really I mean, smart. I mean, I, I think CrowdStrike is a ton of really, really smart people, but a ton of shady business people who use it to their advantage too. You think that's size of organization or do you think it's them specifically? I mean, I hate to call out names, but it starts with the CEO. Mm, the culture you set, the shadow you cast. Yeah. But yeah. Do you guys think they'll weather this storm? Do you think it's... Uh... Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, they're yeah. they're a household name at this point, right? I mean, oh, for sure. Maybe not for you know the best reasons, but well, there was the same with FireEye too and SolarWinds, right? The finger pointing that went around. It was Microsoft. It was Mandiant, FireEye. Nobody had really heard of FireEye before that, and then they became a household name. Kevin as well, and then and they call in... called them up to cat. You know, they don't call like unbiased people to to testify in senate committee right. hearings they call right. like you know after the solar winds they called because that was you know obviously a really big one they called kevin mandia from FireEye. they called the new ceo from solar winds they called the president of microsoft and they called george kurtz the ceo of crowdstrike that was those were the four people and you know and as i'm thinking through it and watching it i'm like these guys don't represent mm -mm. most security people. You know what I mean? They have this like view here and they're not unbiased and they're not, and they're motivated by something different. So, you know, I think, you know, through this, there'll be more, there'll be, he's already been called, you know, for committee hearings and, you know, whatever, but it'll mm -hmm. be this kind of, you know, dance. Right. CrowdStrike is so integrated too with, the U S government as is Microsoft, as is FireEye. It'll be bad. Don't no, no do change. No change. Yeah. 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 Well, you might, let's get to what you were talking about 
Mike, about your truth and truth and cyber, truth, man. Truth and cyber. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so Austria yeah. has uh, recently. You're you're putting out an initiative, and you were talking about a pledge earlier. Um, and I think uh, you got your hand slapped for talking about it on an earlier podcast <laughs> once. But uh, yeah, a couple um, of months yeah, ago, love to hear I got about a lot of trouble. You, yeah, what your uh, what you guys cooked up over there? I know this. I remember this was around. Uh, this started around some conversations we had. We were having around dinner one night, I believe. Yep. So um, a couple of years ago, it's it it actually it started a couple of years ago. I I had this. I was really extremely frustrated with this dishonesty that I was seeing from MSPs other cybersecurity providers, industry stuff, you know, and, 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 and I, you know, Evan, you, and you talk about this and fixing the broken industry and, you know, what can we do as a whole? And so where initially it came out, it, I would thought about like, you know, we need more transparency. We need to be transparent and authentic in this industry. And, and then that morphed into like this, the, to your point, Frank around, I think one dinner, one night, we started talking about this truth in cyber being honest, um, using the same definitions to words or, or at least similar, um, and having that transparency as, as throughout that, the authenticity. So we started a truth in cyber.org. Um, yeah, we, um, I mentioned to Evan a couple of months ago and we accidentally dropped it on the podcast. And so if you pay attention, first lesson of the CB's first lesson of the, so the, uh, what we have out there, truth and cyber, it's a pledge. We're looking for, you know, uh, other, other vendors, um, other our partners, um, organizations that want to kind of continue that motto that that we all you know three of our companies live by and that mission before money and doing things differently um so it, it really kind of morphed out of some of that um there's there's this uh line in um the msp space that where there's mystery there's margin and where you know it, it's the, somebody started it with the idea of that you know, as an MSP, I couldn't sell hardware anymore. So let's start creating mystery and the other work that we do so that we can gain margin, you know, just right away, kind of that dishonesty in the marketing tactics, dishonesty in the sales and, and, and what you're providing. I've seen it in um, providers, you know, confusing people with SKUs. I've, I've, I, we've actually had a, um, a competitor of ours, um, tell lies about us to customers because they were they were losing a deal to us, and the customer called up and said, "You know these guys said this." I'm like, "That's fantastic! They're lying about us because now we're on the radar." Um, but it, that piece of um, at our core as a company, we might not be the right fit for you, and there might be another product or solution that would be better and a better fit pricing you know, capabilities, whatever. And it, and we can't bash our competitors just to win a deal. We have to be honest and transparent through that stuff. So um, our goal is really to kind of push this out, have, um, get awareness, recognition behind it. Um, you know, you know, we talk about some of that community, have some of this community around, you know, having truth in cyber and, and, and hopefully just, you know, as Austria is kind of a founding sponsor, being a part of it, but then move it out of Austria. Um, we'll have some stickers at the hacks and hops for everybody to stick on their laptops. Um, we have a, a pledge that we're asking, um, people to kind of sign up for, and then there's a, like a welcome kit you get as a part of it, um, with some badging and whatnot that as a truth and cyber partner, but it's really just, uh, that goal or that pledge that as an organization, we're not going to take advantage of our customer base. We're not going to lie to try to make money. We're going to be transparent. Um, we're going to, we're going to live by honesty through this stuff. Um, and, and those other things will come.
when we need to. So, um, and then hopefully one day it's, it, it's all over the place and we have, you know, large organizations as an industry that are a part of it. So. Yeah. I like that idea. I mean, it's like, it's almost like taking an oath to do things the right way. Right. And, and to be better. I mean, at the end of the day, we can all be better and, I think, you know, there's, it's interesting when we talk about the, um, you know, conf mystery, you know, in, uh, you know, <laughs> yep. in, in all this, I love the story that you tell about, you know, just the mystery and margin story. Um, and I, I think you can't confuse that with, you know, also just we've taught in, in managed services, especially in the sales process that, you know, it's, it's not about line iteming everything and showing everything that you do because, a lot of customers don't understand all the pieces that go into a good stack of services. Right. Right. Um, yep, and correct. so when we sell, we sell on this idea of protection and taking care of them and things like that, which I don't want people to confuse like that kind of methodology of sales with mystery and margin, because those are not two of the same thing. And mystery and margin is I am purposely leaving things out and not telling people about things to a, get gain essentially um, even if it's not an edge even if it's not person uh on purpose it's amazing how many people in this industry are just incompetent oh yeah yeah you know you you see things you see even you know industry experts who give advice it's like oh my god you know it's so i think you know there's the purposeful like i'm, I'm misleading somebody mm -hmm. and then you know we call it lies of commission and lies of omission you know, I mean, there's times when you do things that you think are right, but they ain't right. Yeah. So because there's a lot of damage caused in our industry, too, by people giving advice that they think is the correct advice, but it causes, you know, havoc. I.e., Kevin Mandia say, saying it depends. <laughs> that yeah. might have been purposeful. That might not have been, but either way, it was right. the wrong advice. Well, it's a, it's a lot of misunderstanding and uh, yeah. not knowing and then being in front of people and trying to educate, you know, I, I mean, this, this goes back, Mike, we see this all the time as we go out on oh, the yeah. road in front of MSPs is this idea that every MSP should be an MSSP, right? And it's like, I know that has to frustrate you guys on the Austria side when someone's like, I'm an MSSP. Well, do you run your own right. sock? Do you have a SIM? Do you have these services in place? Uh, you know, that's got to drive you crazy, right? But, and Which is, you know, why we, we kind of made that middle ground thing, MCSP. But it's like, it's the same thing. It's like people are just kind of saying things and that's being taken as the truth or as knowledge. And a lot of people just don't know what they're talking about at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, my, well, and, my and then, I mean, my this is such an intimidating industry. Who feels yeah. comfortable admitting that they don't know what the hell they're talking right, about? They're calling someone out, right? I do. Yeah. The... So, like, you have to create a place where people feel comfortable, safe. Yep. Uh, saying, I don't know. You know, I mean, I was in that, I, I always use that example of, you know, the Blue Ribbon Commission for the state of Minnesota. And, you know, one of the people there was like pitching Zero Trust. And the CISO at the time asked him, Where do I get started with C Zero Trust? And the guy didn't have an answer. So I almost felt like, I almost felt like sorry for them for not knowing an answer to that question. But then I also felt anger because why the hell are you talking about something that you don't understand? There's mm -hmm. lots of shit I don't understand. Get me to talk about, like right now I'm working on celery. Celery, which is a, a task engine for, for, you know, for this code. And I'm like, I don't know shit about celery, mm -hmm. but man, I'm trying to learn, but it's okay to not know things. It's right. really, it, you, you, when you put this into perspective, at the end of the day, information security is not about information or security. It's about people. Mm -hmm. And so when you, it's almost like a doctor, you know, didn't know any better. You know, I'm not a gynecologist, I, you know, but I'm going to give you some advice for gynecology. Not to, I didn't intend to hurt you, but you know, you're probably going to die. You know, we do a lot of that in our industry. Yeah, my, my favorite is the use of the word remediate. Remediate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody remediates. Yeah.
And, yeah. but, and then no, nobody really asks, okay, well, well, what does that mean? Well, I just, I take care of things for you <laughs> or no, I tell you, Hey, we, you know, or, you know, whatever, there, there's a lot of those definitions of those oh, words. Yeah. And just ex example, you said that somebody gets up there and sells that we do X, Y, Z and turns out, no, they don't do any of that shit mm -hmm. or yes, it's you know 450 to 650 an hour on top of your already agreement. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's the other one is the, I love hearing up there is, oh yeah, we'll, we'll run our automated pen test <laughs> or they don't even say automated, right? They say pen test. We're going to, we'll, uh, we'll do X number of pen tests for every one of your customers. It's like, do you guys know what a pen test is really? <laughs> like, no. That's uh, just baby. Yeah. So it, that's always interesting to me too, is like this, just, you're right. The, the words that are, are used and describe things like remediate and, pen tests and all of these just either they're not understood or it's almost like misleading, right? Um, at the end of the day, which I think all comes back to this truth and cyber thing, which I think is yep. a fantastic idea because really everyone needs to get better at, you know, n not only in, you know, what they're providing to their customers, but even us on the vendor side of what services we're providing to our you know, partners and things like that of, of, you know, using the right names or terms or not calling it something that it's not, you know, those kinds of things, which, you know, I think come into play as well. For sure. What's what the mean? URL? Did we say Truth, it yet? Truthincyber.org. O-R-G. Cyber.org. I'm going to throw that in the, uh, I'm going right now. Chat here. Did I sign it yet? In cyber. No, you haven't, but security studio did on your on behalf of you <laughs> oh. i think right, I put it in there i didn't i didn't check to see if it actually went somewhere or not i'll do that i next. accept your cookies thank you yeah sign the pledge there you go as you can nice. tell i'm hungry so i'm eating <laughs> what do you what are you having what are you eating i don't know some somebody brought it up here to me it's like uh i don't know chicken in a tortilla thing and something Oh, quesadilla. Yeah, that's nice. Just just food appears. Hector. It's amazing. Well, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm kind of the boss around here. Oh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but let's not let's not repeat that to my wife, nor no. this footage to my wife. Right. I was gonna say, I, I think, yeah. I, I think you're any boss it, any bossage I just had is just out the door. Yep, right. gone. Yeah. <laughs> I think we no, all I'm, have that. <laughs> really great, really grateful for uh for people in my life yeah so this is really cool man and uh and this was released when today today wow. today is yeah. launch, launch said, launch, launch today well we've had it it's been up for a while we pre-launched it accidentally a couple of months ago but then launched today and then um over the next bit i think over the next couple months there's some campaigns we'll have some stuff going out on linkedin we'll have some other conversations about it as well awesome yeah what i highly can, recommend everybody what can people do to help yeah promote okay. just promote it comment on it uh, obviously sign the pledge so that the more people that we get in there the more we have um getting, only sign getting, the pledge if you freaking are going to live by it i not sign it just to sign it because that's just that's stupid all, all this all this shit we talked about today too right honesty right. self-awareness transparency accountability being accountable for your actions apologizing where you need to being transparent in the conversation having self-awareness so you know when you're when you're an asshole just know you're an asshole and and kind of you know, apologize and move, take accountability for it. So, right. and that first piece for me is always it's the way I live my life. You know, we, we talked about this kind of somewhat on our first podcast of, of, you know, our, our, our paths and, in very similar and, and, you know, where I lived in my life to where I have today. And, and the core principle of that is living by, you know, by honesty. So that that drives a lot of this so the other yeah promote it and then um i think we're gonna be do, uh, doing a few things with it over the next um couple of months um really it's going to um i think it hacks and hops we're gonna we're gonna have some stuff about it there too maybe some stickers for everybody to grab stick on all their um laptops devices so 
Yeah, so Hacks Really and Hops just are coming up pretty quick here, too, as that's in September, right, Evan? Something like Yep. that. September 14th, I think, if I remember correctly. That, that was off the top of my head. Uh, Another great event everyone can can join in on. So if you haven't uh, gotten tickets for that, you might want to might want to check that out. Uh, time, Have some time talk. management, scheduling, and details are none of my strengths. <laughs> Mar Marlis has it on the calendar for you already. right, right. Show up here on this day. Get on this plane. Go there. Yeah. You know. I just signed the pledge. Sweet. Awesome. Thank you much. So Uh, yeah, if you guys what's want your to vision jump, for this thing? yeah. I, everybody asks that. I, I, well, then you should Um. have for it by now, Mike. Yeah. Well, my answer is I. I don't know. Yeah. My my uh the the big the the big you know the big answer is I want to I want to change I want to change this industry I want people to adopt these four principles and how they do business and so and and as a community and industry we hold people accountable to it um, and that customers can come and see the a badge on your website or in your part of that you're a part of it and be able to. you know, trust you. And we, we talk a lot about what is that likability, credibility, and trust. And, and I want to build the, the likability and, and you, and you talk about this leveraging somebody else's credibility until you can get credibility, you know, putting that piece on this as well. It leans credibility to you as an organization that you're part of, part of something that where you're going to be honest and accountable. And then, Oh, wait you know, a second. You have to have likability for this? Yes, you get it <laughs> automatically. really? <laughs> yep. I think you might be screwing up the integrity. You, you Yeah. start You're, likable you're and fucking, then you, you're a you beautiful know. person and everybody I know would agree to that. So stop it. Stop it. I love it, man. And so it, it's uh I'm excited to see where you where you guys take it and uh you know, I can help, you know what I mean? I'm all behind it because You know, there's the one thing is to sign the pledge, you know, but then also like you got to live the pledge. Live You know what I mean? it. Yep. There's lots of people that like ask any CEO, do you take information security seriously? Every single one of them say, yeah, absolutely. I do. Do you? Right. You know? There's a there's a few that are going to be testifying in front of Congress that might probably have to change their answer to Right. that. <laughs> so I think I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm an idea guy too, you know, so it's like, As you're creating your vision for this, you know, I think implementing some method of accountability here too, to be able to, and it's got to, you got to have like, you know, specific rules, right? So it's black and white that you, you broke the pledge, you know Mm what I mean? And so, -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's a but, good point. you know, that's got to come at the right time because if you do Yeah. it now, then, you know, some people, it'll, they may not sign the pledge, you know? Right. I'll kick you out in the future. Yeah, you know, it speaks to the the mission though of uh, you know fix the broken industry, and Yep. really it's another thing we can do to really help in that mission. Um, you know, I'd love to see Michael at you know we go to an event, you know whatever event it is, and on the table of every vendor, you know this little truth and you know cyber plaque or something that every every vendor stands by and says, look, we're going to tell the truth and do this. I mean that that would be a amazing goal to have not only you know for the partners and those that we work with but but you know put it on the vendors too you know just that hey we you, you need to be doing this this is something that everybody should have and should have that on their on you know wear it proudly right <laughs> um I'd love to go around and take them away from them and break them over my leg when they, when you they, didn't do this <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the crowd another strength thing man booth i mean <laughs> you know i would think at some point it probably makes sense to have like a public roster of people Yeah. that have signed the, the pledge. So, you know, Yeah, that's a good point. maybe Yeah, that's like, like CISA did with their uh, um, don't their pledge. do anything else that CISA did. Don't do anything else. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, fine. This the federal government, man. They're going to crack down on you so fast. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I, <laughs> but, you know, because then you could, you could almost like badge it with uh, with a unique ID. So then if I put it on my, and I click it, it shows my, you know, my status. Oh, that's a great idea. I'm an idea guy, man. I can't do anything. I just come up with ideas.
Stacy's going to have a panic attack right about now. <laughs> How do I do that? <laughs> uh, yeah, we I, our badging stuff that we do, I think, has that, has that kind of stuff. So she can always yeah. reach out to, to Sarah on our side. Yep, for sure. Um, then we could create a whole bunch of bots to uh, just kind of poke around and find out if people are breaking the pledge. Oh, yeah, that's there a great go. idea. Bots. Come out now. You guys are, let's now you guys let's, are going down let's the, stop. We got to get people to sign up. Get get <laughs> sign up. Want to do this? Now we're scaring everybody away. We'll do that stuff next year. Yeah, for sure. Well, I hope everybody goes out to truthandcyber.org that's listening and you know checks that out and signs the pledge. Uh, it is something that everyone here is super passionate about and truly believes in. And we, you know, we it starts with every single one of us. You know, doing that, taking that first step. And saying we're just going to do better and we always can do better right so uh, no matter what it is even if it's one thing in that pledge that we can do better um you know we really want to do that um yeah. we haven't had any questions coming yet um if anybody out there you know if you have any thoughts on truth and cyber if you have any thoughts on crowdstrike or anything else that's going on out there that you'd like to talk about we got a few minutes to uh to open that up so if you'd like to Throw something on the uh, the Q and A. We'd love to love to hear from you, or share uh, an opinion. Share an opinion. Yeah, for sure. We love to we love to go down that road because it really does. Um, it's really good to hear from from pretty much anyone and hear different opinions and different thoughts on on different stuff that's going on out there and maybe how it's how how's the crowd strike thing impacted you or your business or dealing with your customers or what are your customers asking you know about all of this, because those are some of the things that we don't always um, hear about, right? When we're not right in the mix, like how is this impacting them? Those types of things. Um, if you don't want to talk about that, we can talk about something controversial, like what town in the United States has the best barbecue? Mm, I do like that. What town in the United States has the best barbecue? Hmm. You gotta you you start at the state level and then you come down from there. State, city, town. California sucks. <laughs> yeah, California does take... suck at barbecue. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, Frank. Uh Matthew said his town. So wherever that is, his it's his town. My it's town. in Minnesota somewhere. <laughs> I'll tell you my yeah. my opinion is Memphis. Mm. He said he's barbecuing. Oh. Yeah, I, gotta, I like that. Right. Lights are to like, wherever Matt is. I like um the Texas Austin or Austin area. Yeah. New Br New Braunfels, Bastrop, all that kind of on that side. You get the the hole in wall, Texas. How about Dallas? No. No, no, no. you don't know one or no, you just they're off. No, I don't think oh, I don't think Dallas has uh, Dallas has. I mean, there's good places like Hard Eight. You know, I'll go there. Yeah, but oh, really good. Econ Lodge good. is really good in in Dallas. Yeah, but if if you want, if you're going to tell me the best, I'm going to tell you Austin. Or my or or I'm going to I'm going to agree with Matthew. My house. I'm We're going to go really to Memphis good. in May. Me and you someday, Mike. Before we die. Okay. Get some hot world some... championship of barbecue every May. There you go. Yeah, yeah and if everyone doesn't scary. know. Evan's kind of an expert in barbecue. He went on a full tour of uh, most of the United States looking for the best barbecue. Expert in uh, eating it. Yes, yes. <laughs> not Good. cooking it. No, that's I not. Just, I just signed a damn pledge, <laughs> Frank. I can't be saying I'm the expert. In <laughs> <laughs> well, you're you're more of an expert if you you've gone on a road tour where you try pretty much every barbecue you can find. Everyone uh, I could up and down the states, you know. <laughs> that was such a great trip, man. I'll so, give you expert status there. At least I'll look to you for advice. Yeah. So if you go to memphisandmade.org. Memphisandmade.org. That's, that's the barbecue uh, competition. Yep. Nice. National barbecue competition. World Championship Barbecue Cooking Contest. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah. I would be pretty good. I did one um, up here at Mystic, Mystic Lake once. You sure that was pretty good. Mystic Lake, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, up at Mystic Lake. Um, that was that was a lot of fun. I I learned a ton. We uh, had a friend that was in the in doing the competition, so going and seeing him 
cook his chicken and then talk about the ribs and how to like when you bite a rib you're supposed to you're supposed to see your teeth marks in the rib and, and so that that's a winning and then his his chicken too boneless chicken thighs and how they cook smoke those here's Just, the next question for you dry rub or sauce dry that a boy yeah i love sauce though I do love me some sauce. Oh, I, well, I, since we're on this topic of meat. Then, Frank, you can say St. Louis. That's your favorite place, then. It's slathered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. St. Louis. Not bad, but. There you go. Matt, Matt's you got another crowd. vote for dry rub. <laughs> uh, ben vouches for Matt Udovich's uh, barbecue, so. Yeah. Uh, we did have a comment come in. Matt, uh Common had said uh, having the crowd strike and CDK event stack for our clients and verticals has been an eye-opening learning experience and one where predators are now rearing their heads. Oh, he said yeah. the pledge is very timely. So just a comment there. Yeah, for sure. That's another thing yeah. we haven't talked a lot about is what are attackers learning in all of this? Yeah. yeah some really some good in intel. Your, you got some stuff in your beard. I know. Yeah, just food, food for later, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, the intel, the intel for sure, and all of the susceptibility behind it, too. Right? Hey, I'm with CrowdStrike here. I'm here to work on your machine. Well, and predators could be everything. It could be, you know, oh, yeah. attackers. It could be, you know, sales, sales predators that are coming in trying to take over your business. And oh, you're on CrowdStrike. You know, you're you're you're. Uh, partner obviously doesn't doesn't uh you know like you very much or something or they're not giving you the best thing i mean there's so many predatory tactics that are probably occurring right now with that yeah and, and that's that goes back to did you did your provider communicate did your provider step up and, and was there i know a lot of msps that had customers with crowdstrike and they you know they rolled up their sleeves and took care of it yeah, they were they, they they took accountability and and said this is and you know and I asked them afterwards too the same comment you know will CrowdStrike lose business will you move away from CrowdStrike and they said no we're not you know it, the tool works phenomenal you know we, we might lose a, a customer here or there but then we're probably going to gain a customer here or there too where they're going to want a different tool and it, um but you know <laughs> somebody's going to move to the next cloud solution and have something a problem then too. Well, the truth is, yeah. I mean, this attack vector, you know, just considering this attack vector, CrowdStrike's the best place to do business right now. Yeah. There will be other, and, you know, there are lots of other attack vectors on this. But it was like after the Target breach, I got asked a lot about, well, would you still stop shop at Target? And I'm like, hell yeah, now is <laughs> the best time to shop at Target. Right. You'll get sales, right? Because they got discounts on everything. <clears throat> Plus, everybody's watching yep. the front Beautiful. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah no shit. You got a renewal right now. Beat them up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Go for that discount. All that yeah. leverage they had, they've <laughs> lost some of it. Uh, yeah, I said it earlier, but I think a ten dollar gift card, is that what they were offering? So, yeah, that didn't work. Yeah. There was a there was a few I talked to a couple of people about that too, oh, that they got them. That? They 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 gave away ten dollar DoorDash um gift cards um to the people on the front lines doing the work so the techs the msps that they get and and then what happened was that when you went to redeem it so ten dollars it's like what one starbucks and a couple extra bucks that's that's the doordash fee i think <laughs> like, yeah the doordash fee on top of the, the doordash fee on top of it bash recognized it called it as fraud and canned it all so oh, you wow. get this email you know, apologies. Thank you for your effort. Da, 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 da. Here's a ten dollar DoorDash gift card you can use. And then, so first of all, everybody thought it was a scam. And then when when they realized it was real, and then they went to go use it, then and it and it broke. Well, it reminds you of Equifax. Equifax did that same stupid like, and it ended up being a PR disaster, right? Because they started they offered everybody um, credit monitoring through their own, you know, service. Yeah. And they set up a website that was like equifaxbreach.com that it was brand new. So every reputation engine in the world was tagging it as, you know, potentially fraudulent. 
it was like, man. So then everybody's thinking, well, great. Equifax is fishing all their customers right. now, essentially. Right. right. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, yeah, we'll there. we'll leave it. We're coming up on the top of the hour. Uh, Matt just said fear sales are spark are spiking. Buy my snake oil and you'll be protected. So yeah, we're gonna see a lot of that. Well, and here's yeah, one piece sure. of advice. Honestly, the best solution that you need isn't some shit that you can buy. It never has been. It never will no. be. Focus on the fundamentals and the basics. They're not sexy. It's hard work. No software on the planet is ever going to fix it for you. You have to fix it. So don't buy anything right now, you know, until you know what you got. Yeah. Right. I love leaving on that, man. That's, that's a fantastic piece of advice. Everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks guys for jumping on today. Go to truthincyber.org, get signed up for that, take that pledge, and uh, really great uh, information today, guys. Thanks so much, and uh, until next time, have a great one. Yep, see you guys. Bye, guys. Take care, you guys. Bye.